Hi guys, I'm so excited to be here. I'm Jasmine Manilak taking you to the Chicago South Asian Film Festival here in Chicago. Great place to be. It's raining outside, but we're all abuzz with anticipation. You are the vice president and co-founder for the film festival and I understand it's your seventh annual. That's correct, yes. And now what have you seen, what was the revolution from the first time in the first year to now? So when we were doing first time, we didn't know what we were doing <laughs> the first year, but now pretty much know what we are doing and which direction we are headed to. So the vision is pretty clear than what we had in first year. Now, a lot of issues have evolved and they're being reflected in the films that you choose. Can you tell me a little bit about that? So, uh, all these films and the independent cinema that uh, we project at this festival has a lot of meaningful films and uh, people want to tell their story and they, they need to be told. And uh, we are proud that we are giving that platform to the filmmakers and uh, there are many issues that uh, is addressed in this film. So anywhere from happy environment in the family, family bonding to uh, domestic violence and many other topics are included in this films. And people and the audience who come to see these films, they do take something home with them. You have contributed a good deal to Chicago, to the South Asian community and we thank you. It's my pleasure. It's very, very rewarding when people come and see these uh, films and at the same time it's very rewarding uh, when, I, when I go to India I hear that we have a very good lineup and uh, last but not least I have to thank our curator Dipti Dakuna who's from India and helping us tremendously to bring the right films to the festival. Sure, I'm um, presenting my feature documentary that I co-directed with Anna Sarkissian. My name is Amisha Joshi and we're both from Montreal, Canada. So this is our US premiere and we're really excited to be presenting the film because with this ring it took us 10 years to make. It's about the Indian women's boxing team. And so we started production back in 2006. We didn't expect the film to take as long as it did, but it's the nature of documentary sometimes. Things uh, take longer to unfold depending on a lot of circumstances. A time will come, history will remember Mary Com as the only person who has won five world championship titles. So, one of the circumstances, would it be like pregnancy or over 10 years, life can change? Yeah, we ended up chronicling the life of three women boxers, uh, Mary Combe, who is now a household name in India. She medaled at the 2012 Olympics and since then she's become a, a big sensation in India. There was even a Bollywood blockbuster made after her life story starring Priyanka Chopra. And our second character, Sarita Devi, is also from Manipur, like Mary Comb is, and a third character, Chotu Laura. So we followed their lives over six years, and it took as long as it did because, for many reasons, actually. Um, it was very difficult to get access to our characters, and as a documentary filmmaker, access is key. And we did not have it. These girls train in this military-style boot camp that is government-funded, year round, 10 months of the year, six times a week, three times a day. So even though we went to India, we lived alongside them, we had very little time to actually get to know them. I also was born and raised in Toronto, so I don't speak Hindi. I can understand a little bit. So communication, we had a, a communication barrier. 
Now, being boxers, were they guarded? Is that one of the hurdles you had to kind of surpass and work around? No, I wouldn't say so at all. Actually, Mary Comb uh, is very forthright and she has no filter at all, which is actually very refreshing. And I found very rare to find in India that there was absolutely no desire to be politically correct. She's just honest and blunt, which I really liked. And res but uh, the other characters, um, yeah, maybe there was a little bit of guardedness there. Sarita Devi was a little more shy. Um, a shy boxer. Yes. It's a, it's a dichotomy for sure. She, maybe if she revealed herself, that would kind of show her vulnerable side. And as a boxer, maybe that shouldn't be, right? Well, and you'll see that in the character. You'll see that, that she struggles with that. She has a, a soft nature, they say. Yet, physically, she was by far the fittest girl on the, on the Indian team. And when she throws punches, it's like a machine gun. And when we go to the training camp, there's 40, 50 girls in India that train at this training camp year round. And India has some of the top women boxers in the world. And nobody knows that. And nobody knew about Mary Comb until she medaled at the Olympics. She was the most successful boxer in history, man or woman. And there was no media attention that these women were getting. They're up against so many challenges, societal pressures, criticisms, lack of support from their family. They've been outperforming the men since it became um, a professional sp sport. Yet they are not getting media attention. Thank you for advancing the sports genre for females and also uh, uplifting female Indian characters in, in your projects. Thank you. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure. I'm, I'm just so grateful that uh, the, the women boxers allowed me to film them for so many years and they were very accommodating. So I feel very lucky to share their stories. So I actually had the uh, honor to meet you yesterday, but can you tell the audience uh, who you are and what you do here at the film festival? Uh, my name is Srijit Nair. I'm the programming coordinator for CSAF 2016. And basically what I do is I help um, select the films that we're screening and reach out to the filmmakers so that we can invite them over to the festivals as well so that everybody and basically we're the ones who get to put the festival together and get all the films together so that we can screen them and really just make sure that everyone has a good time. Now what makes you think you know what this film really has legs let's focus and showcase this film what is that it quality you're looking for? You're talking about the film that I'm producing right now, or? Um, in films in general, especially okay. for this film festival. So. Okay, uh, I think the cool thing about the films that we screen at this festival is that they really are about diversity and bringing uh, films that nobody really sees in America to America. Now you are also an actor and an upcoming director yourself. So what projects are uh, you working on right now? Uh, there's the latest film that I directed is called The Color of Me. Uh, it's really a film about diversity and like understanding other people of color. Basically what the film is about is that it's about a woman who changes skin color. Uh, like when That's a huge issue by the way, right now. All over Asia and Africa. Yeah, basically she has a magical curse where one day she's white, the next day she's black, the next day she's Indian, Mexican, so on. And it's really all about how does this curse affect her life and how people look at her and it's really meant to be this story about you know does your skin color really affect the person you are and is it, and is it supposed to can you go ahead and repeat that title again because i want to make sure that the audience and for myself i will watch that film the color of me the color of me wonderful yeah. well good luck and i'm eager to see it thank you thank you so much <laughs> now why do you feel that you needed to sponsor this film festival See, after Hollywood, India is producing or known worldwide as the second largest producer of movies and with such Bollywood charm and appeal, Air India being the national flag carrier, it's but natural that we'd like to be associated with the Chicago South Asian Film Festival. So you're best friends? Yes, we are. <laughs> You are a beautiful woman and actress. Please tell us your name and the movie you're with, please. Swara Bhaskar, and I'm here with my uh, film Nilbati Sanata, which is opening the film festival. Appu, eri Appu, chal 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 ali. Tune mera naam apeksha kyu rakha? Malab, 
अरे ऐसे है ना तो अटेंडेंस में सबसे पहले मेरा ही नाम आ जाता है तो नाम बदल ले चंडू बॉम रख ले बच्चों दसवीं के परिणाम ये बता देते हैं कि कौन लंबी रेस का घोड़ा है और कौन है प्रिंसिपल क्या कर रहा है दसवीं को मैथ यही पढ़ाता है I understand you had another film here uh, a couple of years ago, right? Yes, I did. Uh, in fact, uh, that was also a very special film for me. It was a film called Listen, Amaya, which was one of uh, Farooq Sheikh's last uh, few films. Uh, he's a very legendary and well-known Indian actor. Um, and he, I think he passed away that very year. So it was... It was one of his last films, so that's a very special and beautiful film. You have such a claim. What drew you to this particular story? Well, um, this is a very special and sweet film. It's a very, in some senses, very simple film, but also a very universal film. Um, it tells the story of Chanda, who is a maid who works in people's houses, and uh, her... A very pretty maid. She doesn't look like this uh, in the film. <laughs> Uh, but and and her effort, her desire to kind of ensure that her daughter doesn't have to do the same thing or doesn't have to be bound by where she was born, uh, just because Chanda was a maid, the daughter shouldn't feel like that's what she has to do, and uh, uh, it kind of I think that was this a passion project for you then? Definitely, I mean it was it was a very unusual role for a Bollywood actor to take up because we don't normally we're not normally recommended to do roles where you're playing a maid and the mother mother of a 15 year old. As Bollywood actors, we're always hiding our age and you know <laughs> pretending to be 20. You always years have old. to look perfect, right? And, and and look like we're 21 or 22. And with film festivals, you get to tackle issues that usually the commercial Bollywood films don't attack. Well, definitely. I mean, I think that Bollywood, commercial Bollywood is changing as well. And this film is, uh, shows is a good proof because it had a theatrical release in India and ran for 10 weeks. That's pretty, that's pretty fantastic for a, for a... What did they think? You were dressed down. They, I, I've become so insecure after, after doing this film that everywhere I look like this. Every time I have a red carpet, I'm looking like this. Just to overcompensate. Uh, I'm just like, yeah, I'm like, uh, this is not how I look in real life. This is how I look. Uh, but yeah, it's it's it's. I think that Bollywood is changing as well. There's a lot of interesting new kind of. You know, I, I know that in in the U.S., Bollywood is associated with that. You know, massive sets and the song and dance and sometimes ridiculous. Uh, and this is the antithesis of that. And this is very much the antithesis, but this is only part of a larger trend of newer kinds of films being made in Bollywood. So actually, there's a lot of really interesting work happening in Bollywood. There's all kinds of of films, and the best thing is that all kinds of films are working. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for your contributions. My name is Ashwarya Sharma, and I'm the producer for the short film Wheels of Hope. Uh, we are a Chicago-based uh, company, but we have a production house back in Bollywood. And this is our first venture out in Bollywood, our first project. And uh, this is... And I'm Kartiki Sharma, sorry. And I was the assistant director for Wheels of Hope. <laughs> And you're also an actress? I am also an actress, yes. And I've trained in Bombay itself, so in the heart of Bollywood. And I have been training for quite some time now. Um, I've been a Bollywood dancer all my life, so... That's why you had to come back. As I understand it, you were filming in India and you had to fly all the way back for your uh, dancing and then you flew back again to complete the film. For the post-production, yes. We had to go back for the post-production because we finished the shoot and the initial, you know, all the shoot was done but we had to go back to Bombay for the post-production to make sure to, you know, to put all the editing, to get the editing done to... Now what's fantastic, which you told me yesterday, was that your husband actually wrote the film. My, my husband is writing. This is, I think, so he began when he was in college. In I fact, in college. It was way before that. probably in high school. Madhuri Dixit's first film is written by my husband, Rajiv Sharma. Yeah. The name yes. of the film is Abode. Yes. Um, she plays a 16-year-old girl who's married off quite early. So. Yeah, so, I mean, that's where the story starts, but that's... So this not only was a labor of love, but it was a family event. Your husband wrote, your mom, she was producing it, and you're directing it. Right. Yeah, it was a family affair, so... Well, thank you, and good luck, and we look forward to your next film. 
Jasmine. So Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm John. I'm from India, Chennai. I've acted in the film called William William. It's a beautiful movie. It's about uh, two blind people, how they fall in love and how they make their own family and then they just at the end of the day, at the end of the movie they try to tell that uh, blindness is not a negative thing it's you have to take it as a positive and you know keep going in life and you'll get anything and everything now as an actor acting blind what research did you have to do and what attracted you to this project all right yeah i've been getting a lot of projects as a chocolate boy <laughs> <laughs> And then <laughs> chocolate boy. Chocolate's good. Yeah. Everyone likes chocolate. <laughs> That's a chocolate boy and a uh, lot of, uh, you know, like a muscle man and a big villain. Well, good for you. <laughs> good casting. Definitely. But I wanted to do something which, you know, it makes sense, some social messages to the world. And I was looking for this kind of a script. And suddenly I met this guy called uh, Marx, Karl Marx. He was mentioning about the blind. I was like, blind? Uh, all right, I can listen to the script. And then I listened to it. It was such a beautiful script. Actually, the short film, this is a short version of the William William. Actually, the William William is going to be a future film and it will be, it'll be releasing soon. Uh, we have completed almost like a 75% of the film and we still have like 35, 40 to complete. So with your other projects, are you still stereotyped or what's gonna happen now? At this point of time, I've selected the other film, uh, which is called Kani Thivu. It's also a very good performance oriented one. So it's, uh, that is like, uh, it's also a kind of art movie, but uh, the other two is a commercial one. It's a nice one, yeah. So you do stuff to bring home the bacon, right? To, to, to make the money, exactly. right? And then the other one is just from your heart. Yes, exactly. The art movies I want to do from my heart. And then since the movie industry wants the artists in uh, the South Indian movie industry, wants the artists to do the commercial as well. So we cannot stick on to that. So we have to keep shuffling here and there. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to interview you. It was, it was so much pleasure indeed. <laughs> Thank you. I was a cinematographer for a film called uh, Primaya Nam. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably not. That's a Sri Lankan title. Um, the English title is Dirty Yellow Darkness. And it's a film about uh, a man named Vishwa, who's a very successful professional in um, Sri Lanka, who has a uh, very severe form of obsessive compulsive disorder, where uh, he specifically he is terrified that his own urine is contaminating everything around him. And really this, the story is about the effect on um, his, him dealing with his OCD on his family and his wife. Um, and also um, about how in his culture, mental illness is kind of um, heavily stigmatized. So uh, it's better for him to make up uh, lots of elaborate lies about why he has a strange behavior um, rather than just tell people. <laughs> okay.
ආපහු මේසුට තිබ්බේ ප්‍රශ්න නැහැ නේ විශ්ව ගණන් ගන්න එපා යල්ලන්න එපා ඔව් බය වෙන්න එපා මම මවල්ලා නැහැ නේ මේ නැහැ ඒක හරියන්නේ නැහැ kind of like a shame to it and it should be a secret as opposed to bring it on the open so it's really really beneficial for you to have made this film I I do know from the screenings I've gone to we we played at uh the film festival in Goa a very large um Indian film festival and I you know I can only go off based off the audience's reactions and it was very it seemed to be very powerful where like it is a a subject that is not often discussed um and there seems to be a lot of room for e- education to the public um and i know like people like left and right have been coming up t- to kapana vindana um to you know to commend them and congratulate them for just I- at the very least beyond like the artistic and um uh, entertainment value of the film but for what it's you know its potential effect socially as far as for um you know positive change in terms of education to the public it really was something that uh is a society needs to hear more about it and you putting a spotlight to it it educates us all thank you oh thank you and um i just wanted to mention too yes it's uh, uh as far as like put like putting a spotlight on mental health issues um yeah that as as an american or even like a westerner i feel like even when i even though i you know work so heavily on the film was so involved directly involved in it i feel like i still am not getting the full emotional effect of the film because um i know that kapana vindana wanted to approach it in a way that was not exploitive and not heavy handed um which is also something i feel like is a part of uh, sri lankan culture is uh, you know to be a little more subtle about things and and not so confrontational um yeah. it was very delicate and they added a lot of nuance that they let the audience pick up on so they weren't very blatant and i think that that took lots of art it was an artistic film and it was shot very well with huge close ups and the it made the audience it made the audience kind of analyze it for themselves yes i i exactly what you said about the subtlety and their approach the nuance i have i've heard a lot of people um especially film industry people in south asia uh make those comments to them you know which are you know i think they're definitely uh stoked on to hear um so i'll pass those comments on to the compliment on to them from you <laughs> so well thank you for taking your time to speak with us thank you thank you so much My name is Amit Rana. I'm the co-founder and uh, currently serving as the president of the Chicago South Asian Arts Council, which is the governing body over the film festival. And uh, you know, the film festival uh, has been going on for seven years now, so it's been growing steadily, and it's just been an amazing experience to see it grow. In terms of the film process, you know, each year we have a submissions. uh that opens up during uh you know the march april times period we also have open to who open to all filmmakers uh where all over the world off but but the but there's a couple of restrictions right? this is a chicago south asian film festival so we need uh filmmakers that are either from south asia or of south asian descent um or themes that are south asian and so that's the criteria we use okay. and then uh you know films get submitted we have a wonderful film curator out in mumbai who helps us uh in sourcing some of the films and 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 getting us how many films were submitted this year i i mean uh, so i don't have the details you're asking the wrong person but i think it was close to 500 how many films were uh, presented to you in the beginning uh when we first started in yes. 2010 we had 16 films and now 7 years later 7 years later we obviously show um probably double or triple the number but the number of submissions has 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 exploded mm-hmm. so the first year i think we only had like 20 24 films that were submitted of course it was our first year and the, you know the festival wasn't known but it's obviously grown over the last 7 years but not only that i think we've also seen a lot of um you know just through technology uh, filmmaking is a little bit more easily Uh, available to to people who don't have the funding as well uh, you know you could use all kinds of medium to make film you can use uh, topic wise have you seen it change over the years yes, absolutely actually what's interesting is the last few years we've seen a lot of obviously it it mirrors the social issues that are going on and also the um, especially south asian cinema is showing a lot of 
you know, growth in terms of what society is dealing with. So uh, we see a lot of films around mo women empowerment, around uh, children, um, around dealing with the corruption uh, that, that, that society deals with. Um, we also see some gem of films, right? Uh, we just saw a film today, uh, you know, the, the Yellow Dirty Darkness, which is dealing with a, uh, a mental illness. And so there's some films out there that uh, I've seen over the years that are just, uh, you know, take you by surprise. Some really good cinema coming out of uh, South Asia and by South Asian filmmakers in general, so. Blossom, so thank you for doing that for the Chicago community and for upcoming directors and producers. Any words to them, words of wisdom? Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you know, I, I really appreciate the hard work that goes into making a film, and, and it's just been so, um, it's an honor to be able to showcase their work. Uh, the films are inspiring, they're moving, and I just, you know, my, my uh, uh, you know, my, my, I guess words of wisdom is just continue doing what you're doing and representing South Asian uh, uh, stories. Well, thank you for speaking with us. Thank you. Great, thank you. So I'm Ishan Nair, I'm a photographer and filmmaker from Mumbai. Uh, Kash is my directorial debut. We've already had our world premiere at Tokyo International, at MAMI in Mumbai, at South Asian International in New York, and now I'm here at Chicago South Asian Film Festival. And it's written and directed by me. And uh, yeah, it's a sweet little story about love and loss and memory. And Open your eyes. I'm scared if I do the dream. Is it shot by you? Because I understand you're also a very accomplished photographer. Um, it's not shot by me, it's shot by a really wonderful first-time cinematographer called Tane Satam. Um, but visually it was really, it was very important for me to find someone who matched my sensibility because I've been a fashion photographer in Mumbai for about six years. So how has, has being a photographer informed the film? Um, well, the film is also about a photographer, so that informs it in a certain way anyway. And apart from that, uh, visually I just think uh, my work in fashion and my time with frames and uh, still images and things have just like influenced the visual appeal of the film, at least. So. so Tom Ford, he's a very visual person and then he took it from fashion and also to film. His film is also coming up shortly. Do you find that inspiring or do you see how easy that transition is? I definitely, I mean, it's, it, it's inspiring to see people be a jack of all trades because you're constantly told that you're not going to be able to handle it as a director. As a first time director, I agree that I wouldn't have been able to handle the camera and directing and writing. But what I do find um, really interesting is that when you, are, when you have such a good handle on all the mediums, with the process of making a film. Your film just becomes a lot stronger because the vision is a lot clearer. It's not someone trying to explain a technical vision to a cinematographer or to a stylist or a makeup artist. It's someone who's lived it, so you know everything. So you know exactly what you want. So your team is really happy and they're really like pleased that the director has like a really clear vision. And I think that comes across in your work. We're excited to see this film and we are excited to see your other projects coming up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's called Kingdom of Clear Subject. I'm the writer-director. Uh, it's a movie set in Bangladesh. It's about a little boy who wants to go to school but he doesn't know his father's name. So the whole story is um, about that. Hey, 
The poor boy doesn't know his father's name. So it's his actually his his journey to for self discovery or um it's more like a commentary on the system uh, because in our society patriarch is very important and once you're out of that system it gets very hard for you to achieve the dream so mm -hmm. it's about him to try to find that now you were the writer and director what what drew you to talk about this topic in the first place because it's not a common um, Indian premise well um, to be honest I grew up in Dhaka it's a in a middle-class family and in Dhaka I'm pretty sure in India as well you get a lot of child maids at home and my parents never had one but um, my uncles and aunts any place I would go they would have a little kid who's working as a maid, right? It could be boy or girl. And you see this scene a lot where a little tiny girl or a boy going to school and somebody else is carrying his or her backpack. And that image kind of prompted me to find this story. So what do you do besides filmmaking? Because a lot of directors and writers, they, it's kind of their hobby and then they show it in a film festival. So what's that other side of you? What's the other side of the brain? I am quite stupid, so... <laughs> so <this> I doubt <laughs> it. <laughs> so this is what I'm, I'm doing. Um, I graduated from UCLA from the MFA program uh, last year. So I Congratulations! Thank you. And I'm making a documentary right now. Oh, please tell. It's about the first female surfer in Bangladesh. And uh, she's from a town called Cox's Bazaar, where for a woman to surf wasn't okay, so she had to show the finger to everyone to be able to do that. <laughs> And she was national champion for four years in a row. Then she fell in love, and her husband doesn't let her surf anymore. This is a true story. This is a true story. We've been following her for a year now, and we'll keep doing so. Um. So was she your friend previously? That's why you're interested in her story? Or how did that all come about? Because it's quite a different story than you're telling this time around. Uh, yeah, it's, but uh, the similarity would be both are trying to achieve their dream, uh, their goal, and their desire. Uh, to be fulfilled, which is not something uh, shouldn't be that hard to achieve in the first place, but it is. Um, so basically, I read about her, uh, then I went to meet her, and we became friends. Now I'm friends with her husband as well. Uh, That's always a good thing. <laughs> but uh, he's quite scary, so yeah. But yeah, it's uh, we pitched it at Tokyo Docs last year, and we got. How did that fare? Uh, we we got picked up. Uh, Four of the films uh, in the pitching competition, where one of the four got funding for that, so we're doing this now. But yes, I'm writing my next script, and I'm doing it full time, and let's see how long I can go. Hi, I'm Lena Khan. I'm the director of The Tiger Hunter. Uh, I'm Parvesh Chena. I'm the actor. I'm the, the best one. <laughs> <laughs> we did a switcheroo. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, okay, I'll let that pass, yeah. but I know the truth. See, she <laughs> yes, handed me. She knows, she knows her improv. Yeah. Now, I'm Parvesh Chena, and I play Abdullah. I'm Lena Khan. I'm the writer and director. And can you tell me a little bit about the film, please? Uh, tiger Hunter is this great kind of, uh, it's a fish out of water tale. Is there a tiger in the film? Yeah, of course there is. <laughs> there is. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very, we're, we're, we artsy. We ain't cheap. There's a tiger. It's not even a CGI no. tiger. It's a real tiger. All I've really wanted in life are two things. To achieve absolute greatness and to win over the world's greatest girl. Your father is amazing. How can I ever live up to a man like that? 
America. America is where you find greatness. It's probably still gonna explode. There's a few bugs in it, but I don't think it's going to explode. So many of these men have technical degrees, yet they are working as taxi drivers and dishwashers. It was really awesome. Uh, no, it was, it's a great film. Uh, Lena can speak more to it. For me, I liked it because it is set in Chicago. And she cast you. Yeah, she did cast me. She didn't cast me in the role I wanted. <laughs> but the, That's another story. Oh, it's a good one, though. Like, and then and, and my, one of my best friends, Rizwan Manji, got the part I wanted. And they said, like, uh, you're number two. The first choice is a Canadian actor. And I was like, Rizwan! <laughs> that was it. But then, um, and also another Chi Town native, my best friend Danny Pudi is the lead. So it's been. But great. that's actually what happens as actors, right? You're always um, auditioning for the same role because there's so few of you. Yeah. And Especially being South Asian, there are few of, fewer of us. And either you're going to hate each other or you're going to love each other and go for drinks afterward. And so we opted for the latter. It's <laughs> And you know karma, so... That is why. <laughs> so, that is why. Yeah. Riz was Canadian, you're not. I'm sorry. That's if true. you can do something about that, we can, you know, fix it for later. I have relatives in Toronto. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> I just have to say, this off-air off banter is amazing, and you guys have chemistry. Do you feel like in the future you may be working again together? Somehow I feel like this just always ends... I didn't even know. Like, this is the first time I stepped into a movie that had South Asian stuff. All the Desis, the South Asians, somehow end up working together. I'm working on a pilot right now, and it doesn't even have to do with South Asians, and some of them are just jumping on. I read that. TV <laughs> pilot. Let's talk about that, because he's a TV actor, and I know that. Yeah. I actually can't talk about it right now. I'm it's, not. Very, it's very secretive, but it yeah. is just awesome that Lena, because Danny told me some news, too, like that Lena's now directing television, too, which I love television. It's a routine. It's a schedule. You go to work. You come home. You didn't like spooning with 11 other guys? Because in, in our film, it's like a giant bro. Did you say spooning with 11 other guys? What is guy? this a kind of film that I'm allowed to watch? Yes, it, it is. It's a, it's a heartfelt, it is, it's family friendly. Yeah, it's a family friendly, co earnest comedy. But yeah, there's, there's 11 guys and it's a giant bromance. I would, <laughs> or 11 guys spooning together, which I call Tuesday. <laughs> So your other TV show that I loved watching before was about telemarketers, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was this show called Sean Saves the World. No, no. It was called <laughs> a to, it, was, it was A to Z. No. No, which one? <laughs> Outsource, of course. Come on. I don't want to go with the obvious Indian one. But I'm also recurring on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, and we air. The second season starts airing on October 21st on The CW, Friday nights, Paired with the Vampire Diaries, so please watch. Wait, if we're doing promo time, I have to do my job. Do. <laughs> and that's why I did it. Yes, uh, sorry, yes. This is uh, kind of the beginning of our formal festival run before the general release. And it's been like amazing. Every time we actually bring it to audiences, they, they, they love it. So if you go to www.thetigerhunter.com, you can sign up and we'll tell you when the general releases and when you can see it on your yeah, local theater or whatever it is. And what are the social media links? Social media links are all at thetigerhunter.com, but it's facebook.com slash... Tiger, Tiger Hunter, Hunter movie. Uh, okay. Instagram is <laughs> Tiger, Tiger Hunter, Hunter film. film. Tiger Hunter film. If you go to TigerHunter.com, thetigerhunter.com, it has all the links, um, or you can test text. I oh, that's that. right. You had the number. <laughs> I forgot the number right now. Can't you tell the uh, the professionals because they know when to plug and they're not subtle. <laughs> we have no we have, have no shame. Right we have there. no shame. <laughs> but just go to www.thetigerhunter.com. Uh, thetigerhunter.com. It has all the links, and um, you should be able to see it soon. Well, I gotta say, I'm sticking with you for the after party because you guys are fun. Yeah. <laughs> we're, you know, we're gonna be drinking. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by. <laughs> Juice and water. <laughs> Turkey yeah. coffee. I got vodka in my book bag. Just kidding! Come on, look at who you're talking to. You're talking to a pescatarian, a Muslim woman. You're talking about hot dogs and drinking. <laughs> what is going on? Thank you guys so <laughs> much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
uh, that's about an Indian construction worker that uh, works in Dubai, uh, in the United Arab Emirates. And um, one day he gets to know that his colleague is going back to India and the rest of the workers are all sending gifts home because that's what they do. Uh, but Babu doesn't have the money to send a gift for his wife and that's what the film is about. It's um, a compassionate look at how um, construction workers live in Dubai, the conditions they live at. And uh, yeah, that's what it's about. Gift? Mommy ke liye And why was the gift such an integral part of the movie? It's not just about a gift. What is that emotional tug that a gift signifies? Uh, it's about sending something back home that uh, to tell your loved ones uh, that you're okay and this is how you are, you know. Uh, sometimes even though you're speaking every day on the phone, there's a lot that doesn't get through, you know, um, especially when you're not, uh, you're not with each other. And I think there's a gap between his wife and him and uh, he thinks that something material can sort of solve that. He can buy her a nice makeup kit, but uh, that doesn't work out for some reason. And when he actually makes this bottle, it sort of represents his world. It sort of represents what their world could be in the future. And uh, it's made out of the most mundane articles uh, in there. So it's, it's not um, valuable in any sense, but it's literally filled with emotion. So uh, that's what transcends and, you know, we see that she's really happy with the gift. It doesn't matter that he didn't send her something expensive. When going through this, did you make that a top, one of your top priorities? Because it seemed that way in the film. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very handheld, it's very in the moment. The kind of Because I didn't know how you got into some of those places yeah. and I was thinking, did you hide a camera gorilla style? I was trying to figure that out. So, I, I mean, that was part of the process. No, I had, I had um, access to the locations, but I didn't... Le legally? I mean, I, not, not legally, it's oh, a bit grey. Oh, okay. It's a bit grey, yeah. <laughs> But what I didn't have access to were everyone apart from my principal character are actual construction workers on their, on their site working. So I went in when they were eating food at lunch, when they were filling their bottle, when yeah. So it was, it was very important that I got in there when they were, I, I didn't want to disturb them obviously or make them conscious that we were shooting over there. Because you wanted to capture literal moments. And we were there for about a week maybe and they got used to us. So it's not like they stopped work. The first day there was a bit of uh, intrigue. Why is this guy here with a camera? Is he going to show it to my boss? Am I not working correctly? So you know, <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were a bit afraid as they would be. But uh, slowly we, 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 we got into them, we saw them, we would have lunch with them. So it was great, it was great fun. Mm -hmm.